Thomas Homebrew coming at you from the backyard, of course. It's a, a beautiful evening. I think it's about 7.30. So I'm going to enjoy a beer. It's, it's cooled off a little. It's probably in the upper 50s right now. Good time for a stout. And I've got one that comes out of the cellar. It's, the label seen better days. <laughs> Here it is. It's the Anderson Valley Wild Turkey Bourbon Barrel Aged Stout. Now this is, uh, I believe, the 2013. It could have been a 2012, but I'm pretty sure it's the 2013. This is one I think uh, my best buddy down in California. Actually, there's a bigger version of this that you don't find too often. It's one he really likes, but he loves this as well, and that's Dan. Uh, this is an interesting beer. It's only 6.9% ABV. It's not an imperial stout. It's a stout that's been barrel aged in wild turkey bourbon barrels for three months. Now, why three months? Because it's a smaller beer. It doesn't need all that barrel aging or be just overpowering bourbon. You just wouldn't get the characteristics of the beer if you left it in there six months or a year like you do on the real big beers. And most brewers, when they make their bourbon barrel aged versions, they, uh, they fortify them. They make them bigger than their normal batches so that they can withstand it because uh, it thins beers out being barrel aged. So I don't expect this to have a huge body, but uh, it should be a fun beer. And you don't find many sessionable uh, barrel aged beers at that. Um, kind of unique. So like I said, 6.9% ABV, only 14 IBUs. Uh, so not a lot of hop character. They make it with two row, uh, Crystal 40L, Crystal 80L, Munich roasted malts, chocolate malts, and oats. I think it's based off an oat recipe that they had once before. And they use Columbus and Northern Brewer as the hops. So let's get this one cracked open. Had a nice hiss as I opened it. Wow, wow, man, that head's just rising. Look at that. At least it wasn't a gusher, but look at that. Man, I got a nice three-finger head. It could have been four if I'd allowed it to. Hopefully that'll go down so I can get a nose. I'll pour a little more in, and I'll get a nose here in a moment. That's pretty much black with a monster head on there, three-finger head. And uh, yeah, I don't see anything through it. Maybe at the very bottom I get a little bit of a brown hue, but that's it. Let's see if I can get a nose through all this. Yeah, I do. I do right away. I get uh, a real light hint of the uh, bourbon character, um, but it's with a sweetness, with a nice sweetness, with a caramel sweetness, and was almost like lightly caramelized sweetness. Just a hint, almost like, barely, but just almost like, like a hint of a creme brulee kind of a scent. Yeah, and then you get some, you get some foam on your nose. That's what you get. You get a light roast with it, um, and a hint of coffee on there. I think, and might have been more rich actually, like an espresso. And it's got some earthy tones, so it's kind of a woody, earthy kind of note on there. I don't know if that's the age or uh, or that's just how it had been. Wow, and I get I get a little bit of a brown sugar essence on there. Like I said, the caramelized, but just a little bit of brown sugar as well. So it has some nice sweetness. Um, maybe just the slightest hint of a toffee on it as well. And a little bit of some chocolate too, just a light chocolate. But the aromas are very light. Uh, it seems like it's gonna be a very mellow beer. Uh, and it just comes off smooth. So that oak character is, is really taking effect. We're gonna jump in, cheers. It's always interesting when I pull it out of that fridge that's set at 55. I often like to start the stouts a little bit colder, even though that's really a proper serving temp. I like low 50s and then let it warm even more, but right away you're already getting a lot of characters. But you do notice, as I expected, that the body is going to be thinner. It's still a medium body. Yes, yeah, some people would be disappointed because it's not this big, thick, chewy mouthfeel, but it was made this way by design. What they were trying to do is have a lighter, more sessionable bourbon barrel aged beer. And I think they've done the job. You get just a light roast on it. It's not strong, just very light. Age has done this well. It has just a light earthy tone to it. it has a good sweetness. It's an interesting sweetness. It makes me think uh, more of like a treacle uh, from the UK than molasses on the sweetness. 
and um, with just a little bit of a chocolate note, just the slightest hint of like a coffee or espresso note on it, just the lightest hint of a nuttiness, not a walnut, maybe like a pecan, and the woodiness almost could make me think a little bit of like a cherry wood, so some cherry essence, but a woody cherry essence, if you will. You get a little bit of vanilla character coming through. It's all these characteristics are light. This is a well blended beer. All these flavors are melding together. You know, uh, you got your wild turkey in there, the bourbon, and it's nice, but it's not overwhelming. Just a really easy drinker. But it does drink like a stout. It's not an imperial stout. And I'm a huge imperial stout fan. You know I like those big ones. But this, for stout, has some really beautiful characteristics. I'm going to enjoy this for a little bit. And, uh, and this beautiful evening. And I'll be back with some numbers. Took a little bit of time uh, just to sip on it. I think this is something that's just not done enough in beer reviews. Is taking your time with a beer to appreciate it. it was over here. And... Uh, kind of winding the hops up the vine, petting the cat. <laughs> the more I sipped on this, the more I really came to appreciate it. I mean, you're looking at a sessionable beer with some beautiful qualities. I even get the lightest amount of dark fruit off of it now. I very much appreciate this. It's a uh, you just don't get that. Everyone's going big and big and big and bigger and, and I love that too, but um, to create a balanced beer like this, that's something special for sure. <sighs> rating, that's tough. What we're rating here is a stout. I mostly do imperial stouts. Let's be honest about that. This is a 6.9% beer. And it's a beauty. It's a good one. I've got to give it a pretty high score for a stout. I think I've had some amazing stouts uh, over the years, but uh, in terms of stats, there's not a lot that's going to surpass this, per se. Uh, I've got to give it a 95. Before I give my overall, I think I need to pour a little bit more. Why not? <laughs> so overall, though, uh, yeah, I'm going to go down a little bit. I'm not going to go down hugely. You can't go quite as big on an overall scale when you're just comparing all beers. I, I think I'm going to go with an 89. Um, I think that's a pretty solid number. I think it's a pretty accurate number. If you're looking for something that's huge, this big, thick, chewy thing, this is not the beer. But if you want something that has those flavors that's not going to weigh you down, this is a real winner. Here it is again with my scrumpled up label. This is the 2013, but this is readily available. You should be able to find this uh, for sure. It's, I'm sure it's seasonal, but it's widely distributed. It's the Anderson Valley, it's the Wild Turkey Bourbon Barrel Stout. And uh, from Anderson Valley Brewing out of Boonesville, California. This is Kevin Clemens Homebrew saying, life's too short to drink cheap beer. Enjoy the outdoors. Enjoy the spring and the summer. And I'll see you on the next beer review. Cheers.